Today is also the feast day of Blessed Antoine Frederic. Frederic. I don't know how you, where the, what do you call his, the uh, intonation thing? What is it? Enye? Yeah, Enye. But this guy's French, I think. Okay, Blessed Antoine Frederic Ozanon, born uh, to Jean and Marie Ozanon, the fifth of 14 children, only three survived to adulthood. He was a married layman, a scholar, teacher, and author in the Archdiocese of Paris and Marseille. Marseille, 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 Marseille. Marseille. France, studied law in Paris. He worked in the judicial service. He obtained a doctorate based on his work on Dante. So he was an expert on Dante, apparently. He taught in Lyons and in Paris. His writings and teachings have always revolved around the benefits of individuals and society of Christianity. One of the founders of the Conference of Charity, which became the modern society of St. Vincent de Paul. Are those the Paulists? I don't know. He was born in 1813 in Italy and died in 1853 in France. Blessed Antoine Frédéric Ozanam. Pray for us. This is also the feast day of St. Isaac the Great, son of St. Nurses the Great, Catholicos of Armenia. Armenia has a great Catholic history, by the way. This was, uh, it, isn't it Armenia? Okay, two things. If I'm not mistaken, there's something to do with, the, with Noah's Ark. Supposedly, was it, dro was it ended up landing, dropping, setting ground in Turkey or I believe Armenia Armenia uh, so this saint Saint Isaac the Great born 350 and died in 440 if I'm not mistaken is that Armenia was the was one of the first was was a Catholic uh, a Catholic nation before Rome isn't that, isn't that, to look that up. I think Armenia has a longer history of being Catholic, a Catholic nation, than Rome does. I think before Rome even legitimized the religion. So anyway, Saint uh, Isaac the Great, he was a married layman, a widower, a monk. Catholicos of Armenia in 390. I don't know what that means, Catholicos. Catholicos. He succeeded his father. To the office, he secured recognition from Constantinople of the status, rights, and independence of the Armenian Church, the independence of the Church from the nation. From his position, he worked to reform the Armenian Church, evangelize the Armenian people, and establish an Armenian identity. So this is way back in three, well, okay, three fifty was born. So let's say around three ninety, he was helping not only the church in Armenia, but the country of Armenia to solidify itself as a nation. Armenia has a pretty interesting history. He enforced, uh, evangelized the people and established, okay, he enforced Byzantine canon law, insisted on celibacy, celibacy for the bishops. He built churches, schools, and monasteries and fought Persian paganism. Isaac worked with St. Mesrat, the teacher, to evangelize Armenia and to develop the alphabet of the Armenian language. So this guy is all over Armenian culture and history. He supported the translation of the Bible and the Greek uh, and Syrian doctors of the church into Armenian. Isaac serves as both civil and religious ruler of his people. He established a national liturgy and was responsible for the beginnings of Armenian literature. Man, that is, that's a lot. He was driven into retirement in 428 when the Persians conquered part of his territory, but later returned as Catholicos. So that might mean like Archbishop or something or, or Cardinal of Ashtishat. Ashtishat. Of Ashtishat. <laughs> 
from where he worked until his until he until he death until his death. Sometimes these are misprints. He was considered the founder of the Armenian Church. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. He was considered that. Uh, So Saint Isaac the Great, pray for us. Saint or Blessed Antoine Frederic Orzanan, pray for us. Let's pray for the Americas. Uh, ask the saints to pray for us and pray for the souls in purgatory. Remember, pray for the souls in purgatory. 